Hello and welcome to Talking It History, the podcast where we, Matt and Max, talk about works of alternate history, alternate history scenarios, and history in general. This episode, we're finally going to talk about Kaiser Reich. The day has come. It has arrived, it, we're, everyone. We're doing this right now. It's happening. Um, I got to tell you, the Kaiser Reich fan community, very passionate. They, they are. They love it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can see why. It's a very interesting premise. Because you'd, you'd never heard of it before. I had never heard of it before, no. I'm not a gamer, so I'm not really tied into that yeah i mean i think you've like played a little bit of like victoria too and stuff like yeah, that yeah. But, but but just cursory like yeah, on the surface yeah. level. life is busy <laughs> yeah. but I, I had heard of this kaiser reich thing a little bit mm-hmm. i mean but just in passing like people had mentioned it on the internet and you know it seemed kind of interesting but uh i really had no idea how in-depth and fleshed out it is i mean it's it's pretty insane how well done this this mod is as and and for people who don't know let me explain basically what it is it's a mod for a video game called hearts of iron 4 which is this um it's a grand strategy game kind of in the same vein as your europa universalis 4 or your crusader kings 2 or victoria 2 or whatever it's a sequel obviously to hearts of iron 3 and it's um it's it's mainly a war game those other games they're like society games they're about increasing your literacy or building factories to make money or whatever but this is just about fighting it's a very much just a war focused game and i mean that's kind of the reason why i've never really been interested in the hearts of iron series like hearts of iron 3 is like so ridiculously complicated i wouldn't know <laughs> it's, it's like you have to like put headquarters and stuff and assign Div- assign like brigades and divisions and stuff and it's just like who has the time to do all of this I, I like put paratrooper divisions together and armored divisions and like mounted divisions and it's it's just nuts wow. uh hearts of iron 4 kind of really streamlined all that stuff down but it's still a little on the complicated side mm. well uh, this is interesting though this kaiser reich stuff with the divergence having germany having one World War One. I. I know we talked touched on that a little bit in an earlier episode, yeah. but this shows a world really shaken up, and it really explores the implications for colonial stuff. So you see, like Germany owns Indochina and all yeah. sorts of stuff in Africa, which makes sense in a world in which they won. They probably would um, mm-hmm. have pretty heavy sanctions against the people they defeated. Yeah, in Africa, take their colonies in Africa, it's called Mittel Africa, and uh, uh, Goering is in charge of it. Actually, oh, it's oh, just boy. crazy how much the Germans own. They own part of Yemen. Yeah. Well, Britain had the Aden Protectorate, which was most of what's now Yemen was the Aden Protectorate for a long time. So mm-hmm. I guess that would make sense here. Mm-hmm. They also own all of Vietnam, as you said. Mm-hmm. And in China, there's like a corporate state. It's like an East India Company kind of thing. I, I forget. It's AOG is mm-hmm. the abbreviation. But Germany is so ridiculously overpowered in this game. They own so much crap. And there's some other interesting things like communism has become really powerful in Britain and France. Both of them had revolutions after this failed World War One. except it's not called communism. It's mm-hmm. called syndicalism. Syndicalism, something I still have not been able to figure out exactly what it is. It seems to have some elements of anarchism in it, but not really sure how that makes for a very stable country yeah when you started off like france has a leader who's like the first anarchist who is in charge of a country which seems like a contradiction in terms i don't know how that works yeah and oswald mosley's in it and oh uh, ireland has taken back northern ireland yeah in fact britain has pretty much lost out on almost everything yeah. oh the king has uh, fled to canada mm-hmm. so the king is in canada and there's a couple successor states there's this oceanic federation which is australia and new zealand and i think a couple Mm -hmm. random islands yeah and uh there's the caribbean federation which is all the caribbean stuff for some reason french guiana is part of it i don't know why why would they join i don't know oh well who knows weird but i mean it's very fleshed out very broad world and the depth that people have gone into on this is pretty impressive yeah it's kind of i mean i i kind of get the impression that since this is such a crowd based development the ideas come from many many disparate places Mm -hmm. and i feel like you can really tell with some of these countries like you look at 
uh, let me think of a good example, like Finland. Like you look at Finland and you look at their leaders and you look at their events and you look at like the, the manufacturing companies and they're like all of these things I would never would have heard of in a million years and no one from America ever would have heard of before. Mm -hmm. So like clearly someone from Finland has really fleshed it out really good well. Good on them for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on that same note, the political parties in Kaiserreich are amazingly well fleshed out. There's so freaking many of them, <laughs> which is a welcome change from Hearts of Iron 4, vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, that is, where political parties are like really not very well done. There's hardly any of them, and they're small, and it, it sucks. It's not very good. Uh, Russia has been really carved up. They have a lot of good references in the Russian Civil War to the Russian Civil War, like the leaders of that and yeah, there's Admiral like, Kolchak and Kolchak. Kolchak's in charge of this Japanese puppet state Trans Amur. Uh, mm -hmm. Kornilov is still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, Kerensky's in charge. I, I, I'm sure if I read the wiki a little bit more, I'd, I'd understand why. Yeah. But I'm just surprised Kerensky's still around because he's a pretty ineffectual and crappy leader in real life. Uh, but luckily, he doesn't really stick around very long in most Kaiserreich games. But it, it's it's just fascinating to see, and just very, and it has what we it it really takes world building to another level, which is great to see in alternate history because yeah. very often alternate histories don't do that. I mean, they have interesting divergences, but they don't flesh out what the world looks like because of that. And this obviously thought was put into it, and that's good. That's a very good thing. Yeah, I was kind of like showing you the game earlier when we were like playing mm -hmm. as America, and like all the events which happen flesh out the world really well like oh uh, the the heat wave of 1936 and talking about the stanley cup <laughs> you yeah. know you don't really see that yeah in vanilla hearts that, of iron four that's pretty thorough yeah pretty freaking thorough i also really like that all the leaders in this game have unique artwork which is something that hearts of iron four didn't have there's like a bunch of generic people mm -hmm. so like you'll i can't remember which countries it is but i think if you like click on like nicaragua and then click on colombia their leaders look exactly the same. They're mm -hmm. the same guys. They have yeah. the same face and everything. I also like at the beginning, it, there's a load screen or something, and it shows a Kaiser looking out on on the the Eiffel Tower, and there's a whole bunch of A7V tanks right in front of him. And then Zeppelins in the air, cause, of course, because <laughs> it couldn't be alternate history without Zeppelins. Without dirigibles. <laughs> you need the dirigibles. That was the secret to their success, you know. Dirigibles, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Or the A7V, you know, the moving armored box. Yeah, why is that still around in the 30s or 40s? Oh. I don't know. I mean, it worked in uh, in the the Turtle Dove series. That's what the Ameri the U.S. tanks are supposed to be, or A seven Vs. If you read the description, yeah, yeah, not the best design for a tank. Not great. Turrets are good, guys. Yeah, turrets are pretty pretty darn good. The French figured that out pretty darn early. They did. They were the first. The FT seven or whatever it is, mm -hmm. or FT something. Yeah, FT seventeen. Yeah, FT seventeen. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Either a little cannon or a machine gun in it. Huh. They were still, some were actually used in World War II, which is pretty hilarious huh. to think. Huh. Yeah. Um, like I guess strong points and stuff like that. They take the turrets off of them, make them into what, to Brooks, the, the Germans would do that. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Plus, you know, once you take over France, you have all this extra stuff laying around to just use. Yeah. Uh, speaking of like uh, tanks and designs of stuff, you can build the uh, ME-262 in this game. It's back again. It's back again. Back and better than ever. Well, okay, it's not actually an ME-262. It's a Blom and Voss P-209, but it's basically exactly an ME-262. There's like the double engines. It's like kind of triangular shaped. It's totally an ME-262. One of the pieces of art in one of the loading screens shows the plane, and it's that's that's just what it is. That's what it is. It just has a different name. Dirigibles and ME-262s, they just can't stop appearing in alternate history. Yeah. What is it? Not that a dirigible is any better than a plane. In fact, it's worse for most things. It's it's worse in almost every way. Right. Except if you want to hover around an area for a while, I guess it's better. Yeah, yeah. This is an interesting tangent, but in the 30s, as like a publicity stunt at a baseball game, some guy dropped a baseball out of a dirigible and a catcher on the ground tried to catch it. Huh. And he did. And it was like a howitzer shell hitting his, his hand and it drove <laughs> his hand into his face and like broke a whole bunch of bones. But he did catch it. <laughs> Oh, wow. When is this? Like the 20s or something? I think the 30s. 30s. Okay. But that just the, because, because it just that doing that just neglects the fact that how much energy, how much built up energy. Mm. Ah, silliness. Terminal velocity, you know? Yeah. Uh, but um, overall, Kaiser Reich, interesting stuff. I, I've got a couple things I mm -hmm. can, I can mention here. 
Uh, it's kind of funny the Austrian Empire is still around, but it's an empire in name only. It's this tiny little rump state that's basically just Austria because, you know, Hungary's broken off, Serbia's broken off, everybody's broken off from Austria. There's a state called Illyria. Um, the Ottoman Empire is still around, and it's like this big old blob. It's pretty much the entire Middle East apart from Egypt and this thing called Heshemite Arabia. Uh, the Spanish Civil War happens, but it's like even more of a mess than it is in real life because it's a three-way civil war, a la the Syrian Civil War, between Carlist Spain, Spanish syndicalists, and Spanish monarchists. So it's a real mess. It's a real, real mess. Uh, something I really like in Asia, mm -hmm. there's the Maklik, which is that Muslim warlord state that was around during this time period. And the guy running it is uh, Ma Fu Xiang. Ma Fu Xiang's all right. He's okay. But uh, by far my favorite member of the Ma family is Ma Hong Kui. I, I kind of showed you this guy once. This yeah. guy was like this overweight Chinese warlord. And uh, he had a really great article in Time Magazine, I think in like 1949, 1948 or something like that, where they interview him. And he's talking about how he loves ice cream, how like he's severely diabetic, but he eats ice cream all the time. And he has like four wives who ladle it into his mouth. And it's just, so, it's so silly seeing this guy with like a sword and a spear, just like swinging it around <laughs> in front of all these fit and young guys and I don't know. Yeah, well, I always found it interesting that they they stayed around until basically the communist government came in, into power. Yeah, I think uh, Ma Bufang, who was one of the leaders, left and lived in Saudi Arabia for the rest of his life. Yeah. The reason they have the name Ma is because like Ma is supposed to be Muhammad, so they're like taking the name Muhammad hmm. in the but in still in the Chinese fashion. Interesting. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of the region, there's also that uh, that uh, Khanate there that. Turkestan Khanate or yeah. whatever mm -hmm. that's run by um, another interesting fella whose name I cannot possibly Is remember. Muhammad Alim Shah, maybe? I think that might be it. That might be it. The 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 photograph of him is really cool. A little bit of history about that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the first color photographs ever taken. It was taken by this Russian guy who was like traveling around the Russian Empire taking pictures of daily Russian life and also going to the border states and whatnot. And that guy was one of the people that he took pictures of and it's a really really cool photo he's sitting there and he's got high heel shoes and a golden sword and he's looking really <laughs> he's looking really bored <laughs> he's he actually looks a lot like dj khaled <laughs> um, oh boy <laughs> now it's um overall kaiserreich very very interesting um and we like to i like to see that you know video games are exploring this world in a really thorough way yeah in a very thought out way in a very not darkest of days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Kaiserreich really wouldn't work as a first-person shooter. Or maybe no. it would. I don't know how you'd really... <laughs> well, Call of Duty style or something. But, the t <laughs> but um, I, I like the fact that John Nance Garter could become president. Yeah. That's pretty great. He lived to be 98, which is really interesting. I think he's the longest-lived vice president of all time, As or president. Especially no, vice president. Yeah, yeah. well, he was, was never president, but of, of, of a president or vice president, he was the longest-lived. Right, right. He was a guy who once said the vice presidency wasn't worth a warm pitcher of piss, <laughs> which is pretty funny. He was also a very hard-drinking yeah. man, and he also smoked a lot. So yeah. for him to live to 98 is pretty amazing. Well, yeah, things happen. Yeah. Cactus Jack is what they called him. That's right. And then that name would be later used by a professional wrestler. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah, really. Um, you know Mankind? Yes. Mankind, he has two other alternate personalities, and one of them is Cactus Jack. Well, how could they be alternate? It's all very real. No, he has multiple personality disorder. Oh, got of course. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, he comes out there, and he's dressed like John Nance Gardner, and <laughs> he speaks in a Texas accent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for you, Elf Landon. <laughs> I'm taking the title. <laughs> That's something I, I I really have a big complaint about in Hearts of Iron Four is the fact that the portrait for Alf Landon is him as like an eighty year old man when he looks completely different when he was running for president. This might sound a little weird, but Alf Landon was a very handsome man. <laughs> 
He's a very good looking guy, and the guy and the picture they have there looks nothing like. He's him. just being objective, everyone. Uh, like just, that, it's just, just being a tr- it's a true fact. It is a true fact. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they when they put that when they put that portrait from a boy elf in that game. I don't know. But Alf Landon also talking about long lived is the longest lived presidential candidate of all time. He lived to be a hundred. Yep. He died in like nineteen eighty five or nineteen eighty six, which is remarkable that he ran for president in nineteen thirty six. It's it's crazy to think that yeah, a guy who ran for president in nineteen thirty six would like shake hands with Ronald Reagan on television, you know? Yeah. It's nuts. Well, I mean People live a long time, you yeah. know, depending on if you did that stuff early enough in life. I mean, yeah. Plus, not being the president helps probably helped a lot yeah. with living longer. <laughs> Although I don't know if Alf Landon would have been doing a bang up job if he even if he was elected, which he wouldn't have been because it was the largest one of the largest landslides of all time. I think it is the largest. Is it by some margin, either electoral or popular. it may be popular. Yeah, I don't know if elect. Oh, uh, I may be electoral because I think he only won. Maine in Vermont, if I recall correctly. Is he from Maine? He was from Kansas. He was from Kansas and he couldn't even win? Yeah. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. Poor poor Alf. <laughs> poor Alf. Alfred. Al- Alf is in that Joe Steele book. Alf is also a TV show. Alf is also a TV show. That's very One true. of the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, One of the best there were, ever was, really. I there's think. also Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina. Alfred yeah, Molina? Doc yeah. Ock in Doc Ock. in Spider Man Two, great. He was the guide at the very beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. The guy with the spiders on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He also spent in a lot of movies. He was in that new Hey Arnold. Yeah, he was in the Hey Arnold Jungle movie that we watched. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a talking to history episode about that, but probably not. Probably. But not. the fact they got Alfred Molina is pretty impressive. Yeah, I like that movie. La Sombra was his name. <laughs> La Sombra. Yes. Um, if you ever listen to him just talk in his regular voice, it's pretty funny because he's got a very, he's very British. <laughs> a lot of actors will do that to you. You know, the, the Britishness will sneak up on you. Like mm-hmm. a Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a big one. The guy from The Walking Dead, the main guy, mm-hmm. Lincoln, I think his name is. Andrew actor. Lincoln. Andrew Lincoln. Yeah. He's Hugh Laurie. British. Hugh Laurie. Oh, classic example right there. You got to watch out for those Anglos. They'll, That's right. They'll sneak up on you. That's right. Being an Anglophobe, like Ernest King, the Ameri- <laughs> basically the main American admiral in World War II, is like afraid of England and like thought England was out to get America, which is a very bizarre belief for someone in the 1900s to have. In that book, I read The Storm of War by Andrew Roberts. Mm-hmm. He says that Joe Stilwell, Vinegar Joe, was an Anglophobe. Was he? He, does, he doesn't really go into detail. He though. also didn't like Shanghai Shek either. Yeah. He, he, Big big fan of communists or something? No, nah, I don't no. think. He, I think he just more just thought Shanghai Shek was really corrupt. Just not fans of anybody in the region yeah. at the time. Well, he actually didn't hold any real field command until he commanded the American army on Okinawa after Simon Bolivar Buckner, who was a previous commander, was killed by an artillery barrage. That's one right. of the few American generals killed in action in World War II. It's because he was uh, observing the battle mm-hmm. in a really dangerous place. Yes, and an artillery shell landed in some coral. And um, he was killed by shrapnel. Yeah. Yeah. His That's father, bad. Simon Bolivar Buckner Sr., was a man who surrendered Fort Donelson to U- Ulysses S. Grant in 1862. Huh. Yes. Is that the guy who was like, what should I do? What kind of surrender should I have? And you should oh, you He's should have an unconditional up. surrender. He's like, yeah, sounds like a good idea. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Also, yeah. so his name is, yep, as you said, Simon Bolivar instead of well, Simone I mean, it, it, Bolivar. So it should have been, I mean, really, I guess... Simon Bolivar, but, right. but the, it was Simon Bolivar Buckner. It's the American South, you know, at the yeah. time, you know, Simon, Simon, same thing. Close um, enough. Yeah, close enough. Cl- it's not the same thing. That's true, but it is close enough, maybe. Yeah. Um, let me think of other things to talk about. Hoover is the president. In Hoover Kaiser Heaver. <laughs> Hoover Heaver. <laughs> what a president. What a president. What a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a damn. Hubert Hoover's a really good guy. In real life, you know? He did a lot of good... Um, in Belgium. Yeah. He a lot know? of humanitarian stuff. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. He also the Soviet Union. He went over there and did a mission to the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. Um, but he wasn't as good as Warren Harding. Warren Warren G. Harding. Warren Gamaliel Harding. Gamaliel? <laughs> yeah. He, he said a lot of stuff that didn't make... Had a lot of like verbal faux pas, Warren Harding. He couldn't really he'd say stuff that didn't make sense. H.L. Mencken, the writer, once said he spoke Gamalielese. <laughs> um, which was a language that no other person could speak. And it's pretty funny. Some of this, that oh. was pretty on point on some of this stuff. Orangey Harding. 
gambled away the White House china in a poker game. That's that's pretty embarrassing. No. Also, the teapot dome scandal occurred while he was president. That's and one of those things that I would hear in school many times and then instantly forget what it was. Yeah, because they didn't actually go into it. They're like, here, read this little little snippet on <laughs> yeah. the side of your page in your history <laughs> book that talks about the Teapot Dome scandal, and then you're not going to read it because you didn't care. <laughs> right. It's Unless you were me, and then you did care. Bold, bright blue letters, Teapot Dome scandal. <laughs> it was on the timeline probably at the beginning of the book. Right. <laughs> We should do a teapot dome scandal episode. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, no one would know what we're talking about. That'll that'll really rack up the hits right there. I know, right? Yeah, we're really expanding our base to Warren Harding fans, <laughs> or not? Actually, if we talk yeah. about the teapot dome scandal, we may make the the Warren Harding yeah. society people angry. If that's such a thing, if it's not, we should start it. The Warren Harding <laughs> fans on a well, on Twitter. There is a Richard the Third Society in England, which is really interesting. Richard. They're all about rehabilitating the image of Richard the Third who was killed by Henry Henry Tudor at Bosworth Field. He yeah. wasn't killed directly by him, but mm. killed by his soldiers. Mm. The last of the House of York before the House of Tudor came into play. But I, I can understand that because he's like a, a figure that's talked about quite a bit mm-hmm. in history and mm-hmm. in art, you know, Shakespeare's plays and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, whereas Warren G. Harding is like just some guy that barely anyone remembers um, and pretty much has no effect on modern people at all. <laughs> So I can understand why no one cares, honestly. Yeah, uh, but they should, Max. But they should. They we'll should. make them care. We'll make them care. <laughs> I'll be anti Warren G. Harding, and you be pro Warren G. Harding, and I'm, then you guys, the audience, can can know, decide. Yeah, break the who tie. is deadliest? <laughs> who is deadliest? <laughs> <laughs> Warren G. Harding versus Calvin Coolidge. He's dead. <laughs> Calvin Coolidge, another president I really like. Um, ah, keep cool with Coolidge. Silent. Cow. He was born on the Fourth of July, just like Tom Tom Cruise. But he actually was born on the Fourth of July, instead of being in a movie called Born on the Fourth of July. July yeah. Uh, yeah, Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of unappreciated American presidents. Yeah. You know, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. Everybody says he's the worst president ever. No, he's not. No, he's not. They're he, way worse than Richard Nixon. Way, way worse than Richard Nixon. Richard Milhouse Nixon. Richard Milhouse Nixon. Yes. Born in a house his father built. Really? That's the first line in his autobiography. Interesting. From Yorba Linda, California. Really? Mm-hmm. Also from California, just like Patton. Yep. You know, San Gabriel. I learned that from you. You know who else is from California? Harding. And just my, kidding that's not uh, true. oh my <laughs> he's god from, he's from marion ohio actually okay mm-hmm. where's ronald reagan from where was he born illinois i think wait he wasn't born in california no. oh wow. born in illinois i think i'm I almost guess that certain makes sense you become a movie star you move to california yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know? okay. i'm trying to think like george hw bush connecticut yeah that's, Bill, that's Bill clinton a... obviously arkansas right where else are present interesting places calvin coolidge vermont vermont yeah. okay not a lot of electoral votes from Vermont. No. Yeah. It's still the same as, as, it, now, as it is now. Three. Three, yeah. Not when really. you come from a state that has more senators than members of the House of Representatives, that's always interesting. Also, if you tried to run again, I don't think you'd get the Republican majority there. Calvin Coolidge? I think he'd probably lose. Probably not. Yeah, I don't think he'd get, I don't think he'd win there. Probably not. Yeah. In 2018. Well, that, yeah. Yeah, that used to be one of the most solidly Republican states there was. And now, not so much. Not so much, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> not, not, yeah. <laughs> not so much. Um, I'm almost certain Franklin Pierce was from New Hampshire. Really? Mm-hmm. There's a funny quote by Franklin Pierce, and it's now there's nothing left but to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sums he, his presidency up pretty well, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. He had kind of a rough go of it. Theodore Roosevelt once said he was the handsomest president of all time, but he didn't do a good job. <laughs> But I don't really know why that would have any connection. <laughs> like, I don't want to be weird or anything, but Franklin Pierce was really, really ridiculously good looking. <laughs> it's just a fact. It's just objective fact. It's just right objective there. fact, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, and, and Theodore Roosevelt himself is a pretty good looking guy, too, you know. So you can really trust him when he says TR, that. look at that mustache. Look at that mustache. Look at those cheeks. <laughs> Yeah. Look at them glasses and those teeth. Yeah. 
You know, actually, I read somewhere it was interesting that don't know if this is true, but I, I would believe it was that that his name was pronounced Roosevelt. It's Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin Roosevelt. Really? Yes. So back then they would call him Roosevelt? Well, apparently that's, well, I think they would call him Roosevelt, but like the correct family pronunciation was Roosevelt. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And, but for Franklin, it's Franklin Roosevelt. They said it Roosevelt. Mm. His family said Roosevelt. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Huh. And William Howard Taft said Taft. <laughs> Taft, right. But it's pronounced Roosevelt. Taft. <laughs> you ever heard a recording of William Howard Taft's voice? No. Very high pitched. You know, a lot of a lot of these figures from history have very, very high, high pitched voices. Abraham Lincoln had a high pitched voice. Do, it, does anyone from history have an unusually low pitched voice? Can you think of a single one? Like Stalin has a weird voice too. If you've ever heard, a I don't recording know if I've ever him. heard a recording of it. What does it sound like? Um, kind of like this, hmm. that kind of thing. Well, remember, he was Georgian, so his first language was Georgian, yeah. not Russian. Just like Napoleon's first language was Italian. Someone once said that the only person Stalin was ever afraid of was his mother, <laughs> which makes me think, oh my goodness, what was going on there? Oh, and the only man he ever trusted was Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> huh. You mean Yosef Zugashvili? Zugashvili. As it, Yoseb, actually, in, in Georgian, I believe it's I-O-S-E-B, Yoseb. Mm. You know, I, I don't know exactly how Stalin shows up in Kaiserreich. I think he shows up as, a, as like mm-hmm. a... Uh, syndicalist in Georgia mm-hmm. or something, but it'd be very funny if he was like the patriarch of the Orthodox <laughs> Church because he was a uh, uh, an or, uh, uh, seminary. He student. went to seminary where yeah. he was kicked out. Well, yeah. Well, suppose. Well, he said he was kicked out for revolutionary activity. Although his mother's story was apparently that he was in poor health, which I tend to probably believe, hmm. since apparently she was scarier than him. Yeah, and he also had smallpox as well. He had yeah. really bad smallpox scars mm-hmm. all over his face. Yep, he did. People post that picture of Stalin's mugshot saying like, oh, look how handsome Stalin is. But there's other mugshots where he looks like a real cre- like <laughs> creepy, mouse-like, rail-thin, weird guy. <laughs> so, you know, just just want to burst your bubble there real quick. Yeah. Um, but let's see. Um, it's interesting. India and Kaiserreich yeah. is, is... The Dominion of India. There's the well, there's the Dominion of India. Yeah, there's other stuff too. And then there's the Princely Federation, and then there's like some communists. Hmm. Uh, Madras is its own thing mm-hmm. for some reason. Makes me hungry for some chicken Madras. Chicken Madras. Delicious chicken yeah. curry. Well, wearing your Madras pants. That's uh, right. Yeah. Or your Jodhpurs at the same time. Your jo- <laughs> what? It's like a. It's an article of clothing. It's like a military people would wear them. I think it's like. Almost like like a type of boot or something. Oh, and it's like an Indian thing. Well, it was yeah, the British like cavalry cavalry uh, adopted it. I see, I see. I've seen someone talk about jodhpurs and something. I was like, Jod- what are you talking about? Jodhpurs. What is that? Huh. Hmm. 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 You know what makes me say hmm? The League of Nations cities in <laughs> Kaiser. <right? laughs> yes. What is going on there? Is what yeah. I'm wondering. Um, because like they own First like, of all, League of Nations. Why would it even exist? Why is this even still around? What like because League of bring Nations it back. League of Nations was Woodrow Wilson's thing. That's right. And the only reason it existed. Fourteen points. Yeah, the only reason the League of Nations existed is because the United States got involved in World War One, and like Woodrow Wilson was like very adamant that we are going to do this. Mm-hmm. If there's if Woodrow Wilson has nothing to do with World War One, why the heck does it even exist? I don't know. Only president with a PhD, by the way. Really? I know he was like... John a, Hopkins University got his PhD. He was president a, of Princeton. Yeah, he was a president. And governor of New Jersey. I didn't originally know. from Brit. He was originally from uh, Virginia, though. I thought you were going to say Britain. His and dad were, was from Britain. And you were uh, going to blow my mind right there. Did, did he have one of those mid-Atlantic accents? Uh, yeah, you know, there's actually a website. I, I found it a while back ago that actually just reminded me when you said that, that they have recordings of every president from like Benjamin Harrison to the present, mm-hmm. like of their voice. So mm-hmm. it's really obviously anything after like... Uh, like after FDR, we've heard their voices, but like mm. it's interesting to hear. Mm. Who's the first president with a, a recording of their first, voice? First, Benjamin Harrison. Benjamin Harrison. First president with a picture taken of him was Andrew Jackson. Interesting. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. While he oh, was yeah. When, yeah, and he was well, very... Well, we wouldn't take a picture of you with that. Yeah. He, he was very, very old as well. He looked pretty terrible. Yeah. He looks terrible. Uh, you know who else looks terrible? Um, Calhoun looks awful. <laughs> and Clay? Clay looks like a monster. <laughs> All three of them look so horrible. 
What, what was wrong with people? I guess, you know, when you get your picture painted, <laughs> they can really airbrush out some of the monster face. Some of the Palpatine face. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> yeah, sort of like how that King of Spain, like his official portrait, like still looks terrible. <laughs> that's like, that's touched up. <laughs> It's like, why did they look make them look better? No one would know the difference outside of the outside of the palace. <laughs> Probably because it's just pushing the suspension of disbelief too far. <laughs> like, there's just physiological aspects of this person's face that just cannot be overlooked. <laughs> We're gonna put the elephant man on this stool and draw him as if he's Tom Cruise. <laughs> it's like people, people, words gonna get out. <laughs> Oh my god! Ooh. Plus, maybe like the painters got some kind of like reputation to uphold. Yeah, you know, I, there's some For level similitude. Yeah, there's well, some. But at a certain point, you may not want to go too far. <laughs> huh. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm trying to think of more interesting Kaiserreich goodies to throw out there. Uh, the Empire of Japan still going mm-hmm. strong. Mm-hmm. They own all of Korea. Yep. And uh, I Formosa. Almost, I almost, yeah, Formosa. I was about Good to say. Good old Formosa. Yeah. Taiwan, if you're a, if you're a jerk. <laughs> now they want to change it back to Formosa. They don't want to call themselves Taiwan anymore. I hadn't seen that. Yeah. There's like a popular movement. of Well, I don't want to say they, the entire country. I mean, some people. It's the people who want to distance themselves from China. Hmm. Like, they don't want there to be two Chinas. They want there to be one China, and they want that China to be far away from them. So they want to They be, want all China to be Formosa. <laughs> One Formosa <laughs> policy. <laughs> Greater Formosa. <laughs> Upper Formosa and Lower Formosa. Uh, this is what entertains us, guys. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, something else that's kind of interesting, too, is speaking of, like, Asia and all the wacky stuff they do in Asia in this game, there's also... um. That crazy guy, that German ancestry Russian baron, uh, what was his name? Ungarn von Sternberg or something like that? Yeah, yeah, that guy who was associated with the white movement in Russia during the Russian Civil War who went to Mongolia yeah. and uh, kind of toppled the government. And vehement anti-Semite as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And also uh, tried to set up his own little state inside of Mongolia as him himself as Khan of Mongolia. <laughs> Khan. in games he usually like just steamrolls everyone around him and like advances really really quickly and stuff but that's a nice little nugget of stuff they've thrown in there japan still going strong hirohito mm-hmm. still going strong showa era still going strong showa the showa emperor hirohito lived until 1989 he really lucked out didn't he lasted longer than any other ruler from the world war ii era I think that's true. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely true. Something else interesting in Kaiserreich is that Liberia is un- really surprisingly fleshed out. Yeah, someone took some time on that Liberia one. Yeah. Good for them. There's like all sorts of crazy stuff. There's a, a possible coup by Freemasons. <laughs> oh my God. In- what is this? The anti Masonic party drawing this up? Well, Do they still exist? Probably, but I mean, why? There's why a prohibition they... party. I know that. I mean, I can understand, and not to be like you know, you know, I, I'll just say that like there were Masons involved in the American Revolution and Simone Bolivar and the Russian Revolution and stuff. But you know, I can understand like f- being paranoid about Masons 150 years ago, but today it's kind of just like a club. Yeah, it's a club. It's a men's club. It's like the Shriners or whatever. There's the nothing. Moose. There's nothing like the Elks. There's there's nothing like politically the threatening Order of the about East them. Star or whatever. Yeah, my mom my mom's mom was a grand worthy matron of the Order of the Eastern Star. And <laughs> my mom's dad was a master mason. And um I actually And had... he was trying to take over Liberia, which makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I've also got a membership badge for somebody on my dad's side who was a Mason, too. He was a member of the Lodge of Hall County. He was member number 157. It looks like a little sheriff's badge or whatever. Hmm. It says fam on it. 
Does it say fam on it? Fam. F-A-M. Fam. What a fam. I did it for the fam. did it for the fam. Yeah, it totally... No, it says F ampersand A-M. Oh, close. Almost close. So enough. it's fuck am So I think that's really interesting, the whole Liberian thing. And one of the one of the tracks on the focus tree implies that they reinstate slavery? <laughs> peculiar institution is the name of it. Yeah, that's the only thing I ever heard peculiar institution refer to. That's pretty insane. Going for a little bit of that oh, CSA, Confederate States of America stuff right there. That's right, where they, where they have that thing where African nations start selling slaves to the CSA for some reason. That didn't make a whole lot of sense. But selling no, people, no. you know, it's... People are your greatest resource. Well, other than aluminium. Other than aluminium, yeah, that's true. And iron. Iron. And um, you can't build an empire without iron. That's true. Yeah. Or molybdenum. Molybdenum. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All those train cars full of molybdenum that Stalin gave to Hitler the day before Barbarossa. Like, what are you? What are you? What are you doing, Yosef? <laughs> what are you doing? What a fool. Strong His mom must have scared him and told him to send it. Strong with you. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to pay your dues, little Jugosh. <laughs> Yosef. Yosef. Oh, uh, Mexico is a syndicalist country. What is syndicalism? I, I, I think I looked it up on Wikipedia once, and it still didn't make any sense. It's some kind of, I think a syndicalist is some kind of uh, union. It's mm-hmm. like it's like a bunch of workers get together and they make a union and then that union uh, makes decisions. I think I think that's what a syndicalist is. I, I guess I, I don't know. A lot of a lot of the minutia of like Marxism and all these like old leftist movements have really kind of died out. Like mm-hmm. nobody really. There's cares. no more Trotskyists anymore. Well, I've actually I think I've encountered some before. It's strange. Yeah. How the world you... has changed a whole lot. Trotsky Trotsky's thought, Luxembourgist thought doesn't seem to really Yeah, like the, the the I don't know. It seems a little bit like, you know, one Anabaptist group feuding with another Anabaptist group. It's like <laughs> eh. hey. perfect example, like the, the Hussite war or whatever. Hus, Jan Hus. Yeah, Jan Hus in the Holy Roman Empire. And th- that was all about like do you take your communion with wine or do you take your communion with uh wafers? And then the compromise was you do it with both. I'm like, that's such a silly thing nowadays because it's like, well, yeah, like everyone does it that way. Well, it used to not be during the Middle Ages um, and for a long time up until I think maybe through the Reformation, like uh, people only received the body in communion. They only received the wafer. They didn't receive the wine. The priest took the wine Mm. and the wafer, the body and the blood, but only but the the masses will only receive the body. Interesting. Which is interesting because I'm not Catholic, but you're I not, do know this. You're not Catholic. That's true. That's true. The Pope is Catholic, though. Well, I, yeah, I, I hope. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I hope. The, the Pope is in Kaiserreich. He's the leader of the Northern Italian... Pius XI. Pius XI, yeah. Um, There's um, old Pope Innocent when you need him. Pope Innocent III called the First Crusade in 1095 at Clermont. Okay. I think I that's think, right. I think so. Okay. It was, uh, I believe. No, 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 not Innocent. Urban. Urban. Pope I was about Urban to say. the Third. Is it Urban? It was one of the Pope Urbans, not Innocent. Innocent the Third was the Pope that dealt with King John of England in the early 1200s. Pope Urban. Dealt with him. May, may he forgive me for, for saying. <laughs> it's sort of like the time I showed my brother a picture of Douglas MacArthur, and he said, is that Eisenhower? And I'm pretty sure that Douglas MacArthur was rolling in his grave after he said that. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh, Dougie Mac, one of my faves. Dougie Mac is in Kaiserreich as well. He is. Yeah, he can take over the United States in a coup if uh, if if things get too unstable. Oh no! You didn't really see it, but there's like a big American Civil War thing that happens. You got the South; it becomes its own country. I think it's called the American Union State. It's run by Huey Long. Which is kind of funny. Patton is part of it as well. Uh, up around the Midwest, there's the Combined Syndicates of America, which is really funny because the acronym of that is CSA, which makes things a bit confusing considering the previous Civil War before this one, you know. Um, it's run by Jack Reed, who is this famous American communist that was active during the Russian Revolution. He wrote this book, 10 Days That Shook the World, uh, where he like romanticized the Russian Revolution. There was a movie made 
uh, about him, starring Warren Beatty, called Reds. I think it came back. I think it came out in the '80s or something. If you don't know Warren Beatty, he was the star and director of the film Dick Tracy, as well as Senator Bullworth in the film Bullworth. Uh, out in the West, California, Oregon, and Washington can become their own country. And uh, New England can break off from the United States. Hawaii breaks off from the United States. The Panama Canal can switch over to Britain. Uh, just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So there's a there's a lot to Kaiser Reich mm-hmm. in the late game that mm-hmm. I have never seen because mm-hmm. I, I'm just not very good at this game. Mm-hmm. I like Victoria too. You know, I like Crusader Kings too. These games make sense to me. But this game doesn't really, I don't, something about, there's just some kind of stumbling block for me where I can't quite understand it. Yeah, it's complicated. I certainly don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, you know, just I'm looking at it. I'm not also a good gamer, so, you know. That Yeah, that is true. One thing in this mod that's a little disappointing is the fact that in Albania, my boy King Zog is not in charge. It's really, really too bad. Also, the Germans own the Suez Canal. Which, uh, that's okay. pretty devastating for Britain. Oh, no. How are you they know? going to get to India? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, w- wait like a to second. sail all the way around the w- Cape? Well, they go, f- no, because they don't do that because the communists have taken over Great Britain oh, proper. That's right. that's right. So the Canadians have to run India, oh, I guess. <laughs> which is enough, which is still pretty darn hard to do. That's way farther. Yeah, way, way farther. Hmm. Also, I really like it because if you click on the Dominion of India... You see George V, but he's wearing a turban, <laughs> which is pretty funny looking. Well, George V attended, attended his own. So every every king of England up through George the, George VI was the last one, was also emperor of India. And mm-hmm. they had something called the Delhi Durbar, which is where the emperor of India would be crowned. But usually the emperor empress of, you know, if the like Queen Victoria would be the empress of India, um, usually they didn't attend. They sent a proxy. But George V... In 1911, I believe, 1910 or 1911, attended his the his actual Delhi Durbar. There's there's um, motion picture footage of it. Really? Yeah, that's really cool. It's pretty interesting, pretty unique. Hmm. Yeah. You know, um, if you put George V right next to Tsar Nicholas Nicholas II, they look exactly like well because they were cousins. Well, they they look pretty close. almost exactly. They look alike. pretty close. If you look at the eyes, you can tell which ones. George. Yeah, they, I mean, they look. Pretty close. And then Kaiser Wilhelm II also kind of looked like them, considering they all were cousins. Yeah. Kaiser Wilhelm II is still in this game as well. Yeah. Well, he's, of course. An, he's an old man. Kaiser Reich. Where else will you get it? Yeah. Well, there's that Kaiser guy in the United States, you know, the advisor guy that you can hire. There's a Kaiser Roll. There's a Kaiser Roll. That's very... A Kaiser Blade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's just so much to talk about Kaiser Reich. Yeah. So, you know, we're only just scratching the surface, but we're just saying that we really, really appreciate it. And we think yes. it's super cool. It's very and interesting. It's, and it's still in progress. Yes, it is. You still, know, still working ev- through it. Every update, they add all sorts of new, crazy, cool mm-hmm. stuff to it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in what the future of it is. And maybe mm-hmm. one day I'm going to learn how to future. play it. Matt, you uh, you don't play video games, but what, no. what do you think of Kaiser Reg? What do you, what do you think of it? Just it is a it. game. It's a video game. And it is a video. No, it's fine. I think it's it's interesting. I'm glad that people are doing stuff like this. It wouldn't be my cup of tea, but I'm just never good at video games, so mm. none of them really are my cup of tea. Well, this is Matt signing off. And this is Max signing off. Have a good day, guys. <laughs>